Hello everyone, today we're giving you an update on the microchip crisis and what creative moves car manufacturers are making to try to get around it. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers. Well, the amazing Elizabeth joins me to talk about the ongoing microchip crisis and how car manufacturers are adjusting to it. As our loyal followers know, the Homework Guy channel prepares car buyers with homework and research to do before the sale. So make sure you check out all the other videos we have on this channel. Subscribe now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Now let's talk microchips. Everyone is aware that car prices have been higher. In many cases, a lot what? higher. <laughs> if you've been out car shopping, you've also noticed that there are far fewer specific models on dealer lots. When you have a problem like a chip shortage has presented, you have no choice but to get creative in how you deal with it. If you haven't been keeping track, the current chip shortage has caused at least 2 million fewer new vehicles to make it to market in the short run and will amount to several million in the long run by the time it's all sorted out. Before we get into the actions of given manufacturers, it's important to know who's been hit the hardest because they are the ones doing the most scrambling. That's right. Essentially, every manufacturer has been hit by this, but some has suffered a more impactful blow than others. That's right. In a recent report put out by Forbes, Automotive News, and Car and Driver, the Ford F-Series trucks were hit the hardest with almost 110,000 trucks out of production. Well, Jeep Cherokee follows with 98,584 of those vehicles out of production. Chevy Equinox has lost 81,833 vehicles. Chevy Malibu is down 56,929. Ford Explorer is down 46,767. Jeep Compass down 42,195, Ford Edge down 37,520, and Ford Escape down 36,463. Wow. Well, of course, there are other models of manufacturers, but interestingly, it's been the domestic automakers that have been hit the hardest. Everybody in Detroit. Yep. <laughs> Subsequently, they're the ones that are getting more creative. So let's talk about the Ford Moto Company and what they're doing to address their problem. To give you an example of how rough it's been for Ford, Chip Detch, president of Apple Ford Lincoln in Columbia, Maryland, normally had 700 vehicles on his dealer lot. By the way, he's in Dan Whitney's backyard. Yeah, awesome. Recently, that number has been under 150, and that's about 20% of his previous inventory level. Well, Chip's dilemma is not uncommon, given what's <laughs> happened with Chip's. His name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Ford Motor Company has decided to ship unfinished vehicles to their network of dealers. They've never done this before in the history of the company, but they are planning to ship partially built vehicles to dealerships and then rely on the service technicians to install the missing chips. Well, I've seen some of the service technicians. I'm not 100% sure that's a really great idea, but I digress. <laughs> Ford is already addressing a couple of these problems by doing this. If you haven't seen any of the aerial photos of storage lots and assembly plants flooded with Ford trucks and other Ford vehicles, well, stashing them at dealers right now who have a lot of space because of their dwindling lot inventory, well, it seems like a perfect solution to store these incomplete vehicles. The dealers haven't all signed off on accepting the arrangement yet, however, but it seems to me that this should work out in the favor of both of them. Sure. Meanwhile, both General Motors and Stellantis have planned increased downtime hours at their assembly plants, adding to the millions of vehicles that the car market is already short. <laughs> GM did ship 30,000 mid-sized pickups last week by eliminating given features, like wireless phone charging and automatic stop-start. Unlike GM and Stellantis, Ford plans to keep their plants running, avoiding additional downtime, a strategy which they believe will shorten the time frame of getting vehicles to customers when the chips become available. The plan includes training for Ford technicians because it's not the job they've had to do before, kind of like I said. So if you're familiar with the cost associated with floor plan, well, Ford is saying that dealers won't be expected to carry that cost until the vehicles are actually finished. At the moment, Ford is giving dealers the opportunity to opt into this plan, which they're calling the Vehicle Bailment Agreement. Meanwhile, Nissan plans to leave out navigation systems from thousands of their vehicles that typically would have them. Who knows if they'll offer those at a later time to those car buyers. Well, I'm visualizing all these lost Nissan drivers out there. You know, they'll have to use their phones, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ram has stopped offering its 1,500 pickups with the standard intelligent rearview mirror with the blind spot detection. Mm. And Renault has eliminated the oversized digital screen that they were putting behind the steering wheel on the Arcana SUV. Heck, Peugeot is even going back to the old-fashioned analog speedometers <laughs> in its 308 hatchbacks instead of digital readouts. I love it. Well, actually, many of our viewers here on the channel have been suggesting that's exactly what they should do. Also, some of the Chevy pickups won't have that fuel economy module in them, which, as a side note, 
only makes a difference of about a mile per gallon. So maybe it's not that big of a deal. Well, word has it that at least one car manufacturer is asking chip makers to send microcontrollers that don't actually meet their specifications. Oopsie daisy. Well, this doesn't impact critical systems like brakes or other safety components, but you might notice that your entertainment system doesn't work well when it gets hot out. Hmm, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Not really. Don't buy these cars in LA, I guess. Yes. <laughs> All of this to save chips. Well, think about something. Just as the more than century old car industry was moving towards smarter cars and electric cars, well, they get smacked by a chip shortage. Mm -hmm. For decades now, most of them had been adding more advanced features, but they're being forced to roll some of those things back in order to save their sales numbers. And it's not just the cars though, Kevin. Even Apple Inc., who gets to be at the front of the line for new chips, is feeling the pinch. So if Apple has to wait for chips, you can bet that car makers are going to be waiting even longer. So when will all this chip shortage problem end? Well, there is no shortage of opinions when it comes to the experts. Some say it will catch up later this summer. Well, I'm wondering yeah. what you got to smoke in order to come up with a story <laughs> like that. Yikes. Other level-headed experts say it will be all of this year and it will go into a good part of 2022. Now, that's a story I agree with. We've reviewed many different sources and we think the situation will slowly continue to improve itself in a more realistic timetable for some level of normalcy. Well, that ought to be in the neighborhood of June or July 2022. Now, this doesn't mean that all the prices of cars will be back in alignment with what they were in previous years. Not at all. When have you ever known the car business to come down as opposed to going up? <laughs> like, never. And with all these dealers having gotten used to big, fat prices for their new and used cars, I don't think the auto industry will ever have a full recovery when it comes to car pricing. Well, think a little bit about the history of the oil industry. And maybe some people in our audience are old enough to remember when gas was less than a dollar a gallon, like even around that 50, 60 cents a gallon. Sure. Well, then it shot up to three, four bucks per gallon during, well, way back in that oil embargo time frame. Well, these prices eventually came down, but the cheapest gas ever really got after that was a buck fifty or dollar sixty per gallon. The auto industry is a bit like the oil industry. Give them a few extra dollars and they're never going to give any of that money back. For the long term, vehicles are getting more and more specialized and computerized, including electric cars, which means there's actually going to be a growing chip need as time goes on. All right. If you appreciate our video today, consider giving us a great big thumbs up and please always remember to comment on our videos. Comments really matter because they help boost the search algorithms and help others find this content too. That matters a ton. So comment on the video, please. Add hashtag the homework guide to your comment. And if you're on other platforms, check us out out there. There's a list of options here on the screen and they're linked in the description box below. If you're new here, make sure you check out what 45 million other people have come to appreciate the great content of the homework guide channel. And if you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links you see here will be easy to find in that description box down below. And thanks to everybody who does it. It's really awesome. But no problem if you can't do a tip. The best way to help us out is to share this video with your family and friends so they can get just as lucky as you. And then encourage everyone to subscribe and ring that bell, the ding, 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 so you don't miss a thing. Well, the entire Homer Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer. And that's exactly what we do. Well, thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter here with the amazing Elizabeth. We, we gotta, gotta go. go. Kind of hungry for chips after all that.